Welcome in the head basketball coach at BYU in a very, very unique and difficult scenario, Mark Pope. Mark, can't thank you enough for coming in to discuss uh, some very hard topics and try and process through this whole thing along with the rest of BYU Sports Nation. I'm happy to be here, as always. When and how did you get the news uh, that the NCAA tournament was officially canceled? Well, like, like everybody, we've been hearing things. Uh, I had actually got a text uh, the night before um, that it was probably going to happen, that it was going to get shut down, and I think everybody was leaning that way. But um, well, like, like you do in athletics all the time, you uh, just press forward, right? And so we were uh, meeting as a team, uh, 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 doing some film and uh, talking about some other issues. We were actually in the annex in the film room, and um, uh, I was sitting down addressing the team, and Coach Figure was sitting right next to me, and, and he just kind of showed me the announcement on his phone. And so uh, we just dealt with it right there, and it was, um, uh, it was uh, easily the worst locker room I've ever been in. And, um, and uh, that's what it was. Emotionally, in that moment, because you had a sense that maybe this would happen, yep. but w when did the finality of this hit you? Well, it's, it's just it's just so much. It's so much to take in because, um, you know, uh, you know, the special thing about these young men is that they have been working towards this um, specific goal now for four and five years, uh, and 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 so many of them made declarative and and fallen short every single year and taken heat for it every single year and made declarative statements like we are going to come back and get this done right and um this specific goal of going to play in this tournament uh you think about that i mean most of us in our lifetime haven't chased a goal for more than you know uh, new year's resolution for more than two days right but these guys have been pounding this for a long time uh in a very specific way and through a ton of setbacks and and other opportunities turned down other opportunities and then uh and then actually got it like they got it they did it like they did they did the work they got there you know it was just a, a matter of just uh celebrating selection sunday and and seeing exactly where we we're going to go and so the timing of it is just so brutal right it is just is um it's almost unspeakable how difficult that is. And so you have this flood in that moment of all these things, and you can't actually compute them. It's just too much, right? And uh, we had a bunch of tears in the locker room and a lot of silence. Um, and um, we just kind of stumbled through it. And um, we'll spend a lot of time together here in the, next, uh, in the coming weeks. But it, it, was, it was really tough. It was, it was, it was uh, absolutely 100% devastating for these guys. And that's what, that's what they felt, and that's what they felt for each other, and that's what I felt for them. And um, So just in our little tiny slice of world about, about the basketball world, it was hard. I just explained it for me as kind of you see the swell building off the shore and this tidal wave coming, but I still had this hope that maybe, maybe when the wave hits, there will be enough there that there can be a postponement or yep. there, there can be something. They can do this without fans and they can push it back three or four weeks. Or, I mean, how realistic was it for us to hope that there would be some type of scenario where this could have been postponed and not officially canceled? Yeah, I think we were, that's, you know, I think that's, I think uh, the day before, um, after the original announcement, and then especially after the NBA announcement, there was kind of this r mad rush for me trying to reach out to national media members who, who really do have a chance to steer the conversation and saying, hey, you know, this is really important. First of all, I didn't, I didn't really like um, some of the storylines that were being portrayed um, about, you know, I thought, there, you know, we were kind of hearing a lot about how, you know, in reference to the NBA, about how these guys who were getting paid, they weren't even playing. So how are we going to force these college athletes to play? Well, that is not my locker room. My locker room is not being forced to play. They're dying. They are dying. Like they've given their whole life to this pursuit of this opportunity. So that narrative that was being passed around was just so inauthentic and so wrong and so off. And um, and I can't speak for anyone else, but the narrative that started to arise in the morning about some of the guys being nervous, I'm sure there were. But when I when I addressed my team, they were like, "Whatever, man. We, we we've we've we've." 
you know, we've been chasing this for so long. Let us go do it. So, so, th so, you know, we're trying to address those things and in the process trying to say, encourage kind of this voice to come out about postponing, right? Like, let's at least use that as a soft option so we can see, you know, the, the overriding things. We, we don't know what's, what's, we don't exactly know what we have here. We think we know what we have here, but we don't. And people a lot smarter than me, um, I'm sure considered that and made the decision that that, that was not going to be an option. So, it is, it's just where we are, right? And, and um, you know, uh, so, you know, as, as athletes, um, we get really good at com compartmentalizing things. And so I just can't live here very much, right? I can't, I can't actually spend a lot of time thinking about this. So what we did is uh, we finished the meeting. Uh, you know, the guys kind of dispersed. I went and closed my door in my office. And then 30 minutes later, it was like, we're with the staff. We're banging out a list of all the things that we have to attack right now because that's a safer place for me to be emotionally. And, um, and that's what our guys do. And, and um, you know, somewhere and you know, I went home last night. I, I walked in the door before 8 o'clock and my girls were like, what are you doing here? And, and then I was an awful dad because I was, I, I, um, you know, I, I just kind of sat in the kitchen with everybody gathered for a few minutes. I'm like, guys, I, I, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go. And, I'm going to go to bed. So I went and curled up in a fetal position in my bed, right? And uh, but then this morning it's time to get back to work, and somewhere in all of that stuff, I also have this feeling, along with everything else, about how how selfish are we? Um, the moments that this basketball team got to experience this year, like the epic moments and these incredible storylines. Uh, it's just is like that's just thinking about that makes my head want to explode all the things we got to share with each other and with the fans and it's it almost seems selfish to to be sad that we didn't get more when you think about it that way because we could go on and on for literally hours talking about those things about these incredible experiences we shared together and so it's just is a mess man it's going to take some some time to like let the whole thing filter out and and to feel comfortable kind of really getting to the the harder stuff, but um, it, it, the, the bottom line is what my guys do and why they're so inspiring is is they get up off the mat and they'll get up off the mat off this too. And while there's not another game for my seniors to play, um, they'll be focused on how this has changed them and what they've learned from it. And they're going to do extraordinary things as they move forward. And it's just what we do. There's uh, so would you have been in favor of say what? Uh Essentially, the NBA is done, and uh, 30 days is what we kind of heard. It was like, oh, suspended the season. Well, 30 days is what yeah. came out yesterday. And then Major League Baseball is two weeks. Just to see, would you have preferred 30 days or a few weeks just to see? Because right now, calling it at this point seems like it's abrupt early. Is that what you're well, saying? Well, uh, listen, I'm not, a, I, I, you know. I'm not an epidemiologist. Um, I got kicked out of medical school. They were like, we're done with you. So, so I'm, not, I'm not the right person to talk to about that. Uh, you know, I, I, I um, yes, as a basketball coach. for me as a basketball coach in yeah. our little life, I would have gone to any lengths to let, let our guys go do this tournament for a lot of reasons. One is because they work so hard for it. Two is because they earned it. Like, they got it. They yeah. finally got it, right? And in, in like, incredible fashion. And so I would have waited five months. I would have postponed next season to, to give these guys a chance to do this. And I think, you know, my little basketball size, I think it would have been the most epic tournament ever just because of the buildup. You think about waiting two and a half months oh. of no sports for anybody and then reintroducing sports with the NCAA tournament with March Madness? It would have been the greatest thing ever, like from my little, you know, my little seat where I can't, there's so much I can't see. So, yes, 100% I would have chased all that. It's just not, it's not what we have. And, and, um, and so, you know, we, you know, we, like those are places I try not to go too much because we don't have time to, you know, tr you know, yeah, I could get to so totally twisted up about that, but we, we need to move on. The other thing I'm so sad about, really, genuinely, is we talk about these extraordinary young men that we've got to witness all year long. And this month, the whole world was going to see their stories. Mm -hmm. The whole world was going to learn about Yoli Childs. Like, not in some general sense about there's this good player at BYU, but they were going to learn about his saga and his story and what he'd overcome and how he'd handle himself as a human being. The whole world was going to get to see it. And that is gut-wrenching that the whole world doesn't get to see that. And Jake Toulson and Zach Sallison, you go down the list, and 
I mean, there's a, I can't go there. I just can't talk about it too much. Like right now, I'm, I'm, you know, we're going to do this thing and I'm, we're going back to the office and we're getting to work because it's a safe place to live right now. I'm glad you brought up some of those epic moments because we can revel in those. TJ Haas buzzer oh. beater at Houston. Which game one? Like, they you know game I mean? winning shot at St. We're Mary's. here talking about which, I mean, we're on the road at Houston, a top 20 team. Right, no chance to win. No Yoli Childs. The great Dave Rose at his alma mater, sitting on the front row, nationally televised game. That team doesn't lose at home. We turn it over with seven seconds left because I'm a dummy, and then <laughs> T.J. Haas out of nowhere, like out of nowhere, makes this epically heroic play, runs into our radio announcer's <laughs> arms, right? And we have two full sections of BYU fans there. And it wasn't an isolated deal. It was like a sign of what was to come, mm -hmm. right? And then you go through Maui. I mean, just it's, you're right. There's so many. I mean, the fact that we're sitting here th trying to figure out which game winner we want to celebrate the most by T.J. Haas <laughs> as just one little part of the storylines of the season is just amazing. And we have plans to revisit those uh, in the coming weeks, right, to celebrate – um, this team and these great moments um, this year. I, how would you – and, again, it's less than 24 hours later, and it's hard to just cope with the, yeah. this, but how would you characterize and summarize what this team meant to you in your first year here? Um, I, I don't really know that I can categorize it as first year. I don't know, I don't know what that means. Like, I'm not smart enough to know that, but I do know that um, – you know, I got to talk about this uh, yesterday in, the, in a teleconference – um, the, uh, you know, anybody that's been on a team has a glimpse of this, right? But, um, but at this level is demanding as we are in the way that we run our program. Um, the connections that we forge are indelible because they have to be, or otherwise guys are, they're, they're not going to stick in there. Right. And, and, um, uh, you know, you just are, it's so humbling as a coach when you have players that are willing to, you get to watch them sacrifice for each, for each other and give away their trust. And because that's what you do, you give your trust. And, and for these guys to give their trust to me and our staff and, and to trust each other and to fight for that every day. And then to, and then to just see them accomplish things that they've been not sure they could do. Like, it's the most inspiring thing when you see guys actually do things that they've always wanted to do, but they were never sure if they could do it and they weren't sure if it was going to work. And, I mean, you know, it's the 14th ranked team in the country right now, number nine in the net, and, and uh, you know, such epic wins. And, and um, you know, to get to witness that together and experience it together is, is it's the best part of sports. It is. It's the best part of athletics. And, and so that's what this means to me is that we got to share that together, and, and it'll be sweeter and sweeter every day for the rest of our lives. You aim high, really high. Um, when you thought about what this team could do, was this a manifestation of anything you had in your head in terms of what you hoped this team, if they bought in, like you said, could be? Um, yeah, I mean, I, clearly as the pieces kind of started to come together, like, very slowly, right? Because it took a long time. We we're halfway through the – we we're a third of the way through the season before we finally got Yoli, and then as dynamic things happened. But I think what we're thinking about as a staff is we're thinking about how can it feel. Like, the results – the results come because of how your locker room feels and how your team operates and functions every day. And so what we're focused on is how, how do we make the lock – how do we help the guys make the locker room right and how do, how do we feel as we approach this game and what is our commitment level towards doing things right. And, and I think early on when we went to Italy – you started to feel like, I don't know if we're any good, but I do know that we have the seeds of a team that's going to function really well, mm. right? And um, so, and then as, as we went, wh what these guys did without Yoli in the first nine games was epic. I mean, it was incredible. It's, it, I don't know if this is the hardest schedule a BYU team has ever had, but it's got to be right there with the hardest schedule ever no question. that a BYU team's had. And and for these guys to to pull that off with Zach, you know, having no buildup, he just th jumped in the very first official game and and no yo and a new staff and and that schedule for these guys to go six and three and then get yo back and kind of run with it. I mean, it's fun, man. I, you know, as, as devastating as this is, and I, as devastating as this is, like I'll spend the rest of my life reflecting on the memories from the season because it was so it was so tremendous. You should. And the senior night situation has taken on extra meaning. As devastating and as painful as it is for it to come to an abrupt halt, on that night, BYU basketball was the best team in the country. Yep.
and they celebrated like the best team in the country, yeah. and that's extra sweet looking back on. You them. know, and Sean Farnham is a dear friend of mine, and and uh, he's been covering you know college basketball forever, and he's in the SEC and the ACC now, full time, and he came and did that game, and and he told me multiple times after he just couldn't stop talking about. It. He's like, I've never been in a venue like that. He's like, mm-hmm. in all my years of doing college basketball, in every I've never been in a venue that was as magic as it was in the Marriott Center that night, and and it's these guys senior night. You know, oh. there's something so just, it's just so painful to think, you know, Cal said it so well yesterday about like, you're not, sp- you're supposed to end your career walking off the court in some form or fashion, having fought your last time. Like that's how it's supposed to end. And these seniors didn't get to end that way. And so you can sit here and dwell on that and just be just devastated by that. Or it doesn't take that long to get back to that Gonzaga senior night. I challenge anybody in the world to find me an example of a more epic senior night for all the – I don't think there's ever been one. Now, I hope someone can prove I, – I, I, I bring it on. Like, I'd love to know. <laughs> but I don't think there's ever been a senior night that ever in college basketball that had all the drama built in that was building all season long and over the last four years and, and in that environment. It, it, I, again, it seems greedy, doesn't it? Doesn't it seem greedy for us to be in here and be like, how come we can't get the NCAA tournament when we got – Moments like that over and over and over again this season. I am greedy, <laughs> but I'm willing to acknowledge it. Hey, so are we. I, I've been here 14 years. Spencer, you've been here forever. You've been doing this forever, Mark. That was one of those amazing special nights, right? Yeah. I did want to ask you, I know Colby Lee got sick in Vegas. He was tested for corona, right? And it's not corona. I know people are wondering about yeah. that. Is he doing okay? Uh, yeah, he's doing better. Uh, right now he's got a bacterial pneumonia that's kind of got him. Um, and so he's doing better. He, you know, we he, we thought he was getting better. You know, he actually was sick for a week, missed all practice, and then on we played Monday on Saturday. He was feeling way better. He came down, and then by Sunday morning again, he felt awful again. And so he was just quarantined in the room Sunday and Monday. And I was sad not to have him back, but you know, he's he's got a long tenure here still ahead of him. Now, you have brought up the point that you're, you're ready to get back to work. You want to push it forward. You don't want to dwell on something that you can't change and can't control. What you can't control is the future. Does the future include, uh, in your opinion, some unique opportunities where the NCAA may grant some of your seniors a, a chance to come back and, and finish it? Or do you, do you feel like that, that you, it's dangerous to even think about something like that? Are you asking me for my vote, or are you asking me for what I think is going to happen? Yes, correct. Because oh. clearly I vote all those guys come back, man. Let them come back. So um, I, I don't know what they're going to decide. You know, it's, uh, it's, yeah, I think at face value it seems really simple. Like, you know, and, and I know there's a lot of coaches pushing for it, and I think it seems – I mean, with our guys, it's just it's like, you know, you just think about it. I mean, you just think about it, – it's, it's, this is not a one-off for them. You know, I heard uh, someone, uh, t- a commentator, talking about uh, a player that's going to be a one-and-done, and this was his only chance at his particular school to go to the NCAA tournament. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about dudes that have been chasing this for four years – Right, and they finally got it as seniors. Like that's a totally different animal, mm. right? And um, so, you know, I, I I do. If 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 the NCAA can swing it, and they can make it functional, yes, I would love to give these young men a, another chance to do this. And then the guys have to figure out if it works for them and it works for their families, or whatever. But yeah, I think it I think it'd be beautiful. The one thing we're in completely uncharted territory. We've never been here before. This has never existed before. Uh, Athletes have never had to suffer this consequence before, ever. And so I don't think that saying, hey, we're going to, for one year, you know, there's a big deal out now, um, red shirt, corona year, or whatever, hashtag. And, and uh, I think I said that backwards. <laughs> and um, I am, I'm having thousands of those shirts printed out just for me to wear now, just so I can wear them everywhere. <laughs> so, so, so you have multiple. You're not just wearing the same one. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So Get us a few. We'll yeah. wear them on national TV. TV, yes. baby, let's go. So I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, you know, um, you know, and that's one of the things that's extraordinary about our guys. Our guys will, uh, I don't know if any of them actually woke up this morning, but they will wake up tomorrow because it's what they've done all year. It's what's been magical to watch is these guys just get up off the mat and they will wake up and they will push forward and, and uh, even with an uncertain future, uh, uncertain options, they will push forward and, and, and do special things. That's what athletics is, teaches you. That's why we have athlete, That's why we have sport is because it it teaches you how to do that. 
Coach, uh, again, we appreciate you coming in studio. Um, this is, as, as painful as the whole situation is, this has been an uplifting thing for us. Yeah. It's yeah. been uplifting for fans to hear yeah. you and your voice and your resolve to, to push forward and, yeah. and make magic happen again. Yeah, well, I'll tell you this. For anybody that's listening right now, like right now, uh, a, a couple things I hope happen. I hope people can celebrate these young men. Okay. I hope we can all celebrate what we got to experience this year together. It wasn't everything we wanted to experience. It just got cut short by a pandemic. I said yesterday, the only thing that was going to stop this team was a pandemic. There was nothing else that was going to stop. It them, hasn't right? happened in a hundred years. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah. but, but, but it is like, there's so much, like there's so much for us to learn from these young men, how they carried themselves this year. There's so much for us to be inspired by. And their their story and their relationship with BYU is not over. Like we will be, we will be reveling and treasuring our experience with Jake Toulson and his saga and Yoli Childs and TJ Hawes and Dalton Nixon and Zach Selyus for, for years and years to come and, and remembering the gift that they've given us um, and what we got to experience with them. And that, like, you know, while, while I can't go to the other places for too long because it gets too dark, I can live there. We should all live there right now. Absolutely, and we have plans to do so in the coming weeks. Mark, we appreciate the time. Thanks, guys.